If you've got something to say about television, there's now a place where you can find your voice. Hello and welcome to The TV Show, the programme that gives the audience a say and a chance to put your questions to the programme makers. To get involved and join the conversation about television, go to channel4.com slash the TV show. Countdown is sponsored by I Believe Gel. Pain relief you can count on. Welcome to Wednesday's edition of Countdown. We've had a nice letter from a viewer. Unfortunately, they haven't given us their name, but they are convinced that Rachel and Susie are sisters. And they've got the proof. Take a look at this. There you go. <laughs> See, I, always... <laughs> I always thought you two were superior, but not in that sort of way. <laughs> what have you got to say for yourself, girls? I, we look like strippers. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of strippers, I've got a picture of you here as well, Jeff. I think um, you sent this in as part of your applications for this mm. job, I Did understand. I? Yeah. It's, um... <laughs> <laughs> uh, and what's funny about that? <laughs> Don't understand it. Very clever indeed. <laughs> let's get out of that habit, shall we? Let's see who's got the winning habit today. Uh, let's meet our two contestants, shall we? First of all, a fellow who's had an absolutely fantastic run in Countdown. He's our current champion, Jimmy Goff. This will be his final appearance of this particular run, whatever happens today. Despite claiming he only wanted to win a teapot for his mum, he's notched up an impressive seven victories so far with a top score of 116. He's on the brink of becoming an Octachamp. He's a student. He described himself on his application form was determined, and he's certainly determined to become an Octachamp today. And I just wonder, Jimmy, whether you're more nervous today than you were on the first day? Uh, no, actually, like, least nervous. Um, yeah, I got used to it, and, yeah. Fantastic. Well, it's been a fantastic run. The best of luck to you today. Thanks. And likewise to uh, your opponent, who is Tony Larlam. Uh, Tony comes from uh, St. Leonard's on Sea. He's a, re a retired police officer. He's married to Mary. He has two daughters, Catherine and Andrea. He says bringing the pair of them up has been his greatest achievement. In his spare time, Tony enjoys reading, cycling and walking. And after doing a charity ab sale a couple of years ago, he's keen to try that again as well. It wasn't once enough then, Tony. Well, it was such a good experience. Was, was it? Yeah, it was, scary. A, it was a lovely day. It was a beautiful sunny day and it was, uh, yeah, never done it before and it was great. I'd love to do it again. Not, not frightening at all? Not to me. There were a few other people there that were a bit scared, but uh, I thought it was great. Mm. Uh, Music-wise, Tony says he's a fan of Elbow. Um, I like them as well, Tony, but of course not as much as Vampire Weekend. <laughs> um, so today, our champion, Jimmy Goff, uh, takes on his challenger, Tony Larlam. Uh, now, alongside Sister Susie in Dictionary Corner today, you've seen him on Have I Got News For You, Three Men In A Boat, uh, and uh, Rory and Paddy's Great British Adventure, a host <laughs> of other things as well. Please welcome Rory McGrath. Thank you. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you, Jeff. Three, three Men In A Boat always look great fun. It, we try to make it look great fun. It's actually very, very hard work indeed. <laughs> the, the question everyone asks is, of course, do we sleep on the boat? Do you sleep on the boat? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, we had with the, the, the nights we did one scene where we were, when, when we were sort of in the boat at night playing cards, you know, and, and the boat is gently rocking. In fact, that was done in, uh, in broad daylight at 11 o'clock in the morning in Portsmouth Harbour with the boat covered in tarpaulin and all, oh, the, no. all the stagehands rocking the boat like this. We were huddled in blankets, sweating our cops off. We were completely <laughs> soaked. All those illusions shattered. Um, OK, here's our 
uh, contest today then. And of course, as defending champion, uh, Jimmy has the first choice of letters. Off you go, Jimmy. Uh, good afternoon, Rachel. Afternoon again, Jimmy. Uh, can I start with a consonant, please? We'll start with T. And a vowel. I. Consonant. L. A vowel. E. Consonant. T. A vowel. U. A consonant. R. A consonant. F. And a final consonant, please. And a final D. And for the first time today, here's the countdown clock. Tony, how many? Seven. And Jimmy? Yeah, seven as well. What's yours, Jimmy? Flutter. Flutter. And Tony? Fertile. Uh, fertile, Susie? Yeah, unfortunately, you can't spell it with a U. It has to be the two E's, and we've only got one E here, so I have to say no to that, Tony. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Anything better than seven over there? I got flirted from flirted. the lovely uh, Susie, and also <laughs> reminds me, fruitlet. Fruitlet. Little fruit. A little fruit. Immature fruit. Fruitlet Only paid. immature fruit. No, <laughs> Uh, so Jimmy's off and running. He has seven. Tony yet to break his duck. Here's the second round, though. Another letters round, of course. Tony, your pick this time. Hello, Rachel. Hi, Could Tony. I start with a vowel, please. Thank you. Start with I. And another. E. And a third. O. And a consonant, please. T. And another. P. And another. T. And another consonant. R. Uh, a final vowel, please. Oh. Uh, e and one more, please, Tony. Uh, consonant to finish. And to finish, R. And your 30 seconds starts now. Jimmy, how many this time? Seven. And Tony? Eight. OK, what's the seven, Jimmy? Pottier. Pottier. <laughs> and uh, Tony? Prettier. Prettier. Prettier is there. Yeah, Very the two good. E's. Yeah, oh, well done. Oh. Oh, uh, very good indeed. Uh, good quality start. Can you match eight, Rory, Susie? Mm, well, you've got Potter, huh? Yes. Someone who potters around not oh, doing very yeah. much. Like us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, very good indeed. Uh, OK, Jimmy has seven, Tony has eight. On to our next round, another letters round. Jimmy, your pick. Can I start with a consonant, please? Thank you. C. And a vowel. O. A consonant. N. A vowel. E. Consonant. V. Vowel. A. Consonant. B. A vowel. O. And a final consonant, please. And lastly, R. And time starts now. Tony, how many this time? Uh, can't get above five. Five. Jimmy? Six. OK, what's the five, Tony? Cobra. Cobra. And the six, please, Jimmy? Carbon. Yes, Carbon. very good. Yeah. Carbon, yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, uh, difficult little collection of letters, weren't they? Mm. What have you got hard, over there? Hard to get over six on that mm. one, isn't it? Yeah, there was a seven, actually. Um, oh, sir, you never told me about that. <laughs> Sorry, it was a very last-minute one. <laughs> uh, Baconer was there, as in a, a pig ready for bacon. Uh, Jimmy, 13. Tony, 8 at the moment. On to our next uh, letters round. Tony, your pick. Uh, may I have a consonant to start, please? Thank you, Tony. J. And another. T. And a third. S. And a vowel, please. I. And another. A. And a third vowel. Another A. A consonant. S. Another consonant. N. And a final vowel, please. And a final O. And here's the countdown clock. Jimmy? Just six. And Tony? Uh, only four. OK, what's the four, Tony? Sins. Sins, yeah. And the six, Jimmy? Stains. Stains. Stains, yeah. yes. Certainly there. Uh, tough to find more than six, though. Yeah, we've got yeah. a seven got with sonatas. Oh, As in Frank Sonata. <laughs> <laughs> As in Beethoven's Moonlight. Oh, sorry, yes. Yeah, <laughs> OK. <laughs> OK. Uh, Jimmy has 19 and uh, Tony has eight. At the moment, a long way to go, very early stages. It's time for our first numbers round, though. And, Jimmy, it's your selection. Um, just one large, five small, please. One large and five small, like usual. Thank you, Jimmy. So, this first numbers round, we have five, seven, one, three, another one, and 50. And the target, 579. And 30 seconds to reach that target. Tony. 580. 580. One away. And Jimmy? 579. It's not written down. OK. Well, let's hear it then, Jimmy. OK. Um, 50 minus the two ones. 50 minus 1 minus 1 is 48. Um, times the 7 plus 5. 7 plus 5 is 12. Times them together for 5, 7, 6. And add on the 3. And add on the 3. Lovely. Great. Yeah, absolutely brilliant. Um, Jimmy has 29, Tony has 8. They can take a breather at the moment. We're going to pop over to Dictionary Corner to have a chat with Rory. Uh, and yesterday on the programme, something got your goat, got yeah, your gander a bit. because I'm the sort of sad bloke who gets annoyed by tiny, tiny things. And I noticed in yesterday's show that um, somebody asked for a consonant and the letter Y was produced. And uh, that got me thinking about um, the, what defines a consonant and what defines a vowel. And I decided to write you a little poem. Love to hear it. It's called The Letter Y. The number of English vowels is five. That's what we all learnt at school. Anyone saying different saints alive must be some kind of fool. Just to remind you, there's A and O, and E and U, and of course there's I. But something dearly I'd like to know... Why, oh why, is there no place for why? Is why a consonant or is it a vowel? I simply had to know. So to learn about phonetics, to uni I did go. I asked the professor of linguistics to explain the nature of why, and when he told me what it was, I nearly began to cry. <laughs> it made me want to throw in the towel. It was more annoying than Simon Cowell. <laughs> the truth of why made me growl. What we learned in school was foul, because why, you see, is in fact a semi vocalised frictionless continuant.
It could always be $5. I think why should be a vowel. I'm really, I, I think, what do you think, ladies and gentlemen? Why should be a vowel, shouldn't it? We'll start the campaign for it, shouldn't we? Yeah. Mm. Mm. Susie, it's you, sad. I'm sounding like a sad anorak now. <laughs> 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 campaign to make why a vowel. You know? <laughs> we all join behind you, all are sad anoraks as well, think, Rory. You're, you're a literate person. Oh, uh, yeah, no, I can see what you mean about it. But the thing about why that bothers me is that it, the why in adverbs is going out. In other words, we don't use adverbs anymore. So we say drive safe. Uh, as you say, I'm good, that kind of thing. And I love adverbs. But I, I sound like a real nerd but now. You but you can I have, like you know, um, adverbs can end in a y, R, I, couldn't they? Like, sadly, with an I. Mm. Mm -hmm. No. But I'll tell you what, <laughs> shall I tell you something, Susan? The loveliest vowel of all is you. Oh. <laughs> you old sweet uh -oh. talker. <laughs> Don't forget she's a nun, for goodness sake. <laughs> Well, yeah. exciting that picture was, too. <laughs> <laughs> I think we should move hastily along here. Jamie, Jimmy's on 29 and Tony is on 8. Here's your first teaser. The words are album hem, album hem. And the clue, a catchy tune for the bees, perhaps. A catchy tune for the bees, perhaps. <laughs> I Believe Gel for Joint and Muscular Pain. Sponsors Countdown. Are you really leaving? There's nothing for me here. I'm here. I need an ultrasound! Drama 2, Mandy, Drama 1, Carter, Jackie! Watching an episode of VR, I, I couldn't breathe until the end. It was, I was like holding my breath. What was it that made ER so special? It was a phenomenon. Oh, it was so exciting. So exciting. You don't know what to expect. Believable characters. Oh no, would you look at this? Who grew up on screen. Well, he's my student. Events have stayed with you. Long after the credits rolled. The last few scenes. <laughs> You've got a cut. Spend the night with the cast of ER. Followed by the last ever episode. ER Night, Thursday from 5 past 8 on More 4. I Believe Gel for Joint and Muscular Pain. Sponsors Countdown. A catchy tune for the bees, perhaps hummable. The answer to our tea time teaser. Jimmy has 29, Tony has eight. A very long way to go. Let's move on with our next round, another letters round. Tony, your pick. Uh, may I start with a consonant, please? Thank you. Start with R. And another. T. And a third one. Another R. And a vowel, please. U. And another vowel. A. And a third vowel. O. Uh, consonant, please. X. And a vowel, please. U. And a final consonant. And a final K. And your 30 seconds starts now. Well, Jimmy, what do you make of that? Just four. Four, yeah. And Tony? Yeah, just four. What's your four, Tony? Tour. And yours, Jimmy? Rota. Rota. Tour and Rota, yeah. What have you got over there, Rory? Susie? A, four, a French four, Roux, the cooking sauce, R O U X. Mm -hmm. That, right? <laughs> that was it. Yeah, that's absolutely right. And uh, <laughs> route, nothing, nothing, nothing else. better at all. No, no. no. Uh, it was a pretty barren collection. Uh, so uh, Jimmy has 33. Tony has 12 at the moment. On to our next letters round. Let's hope for a better collection this time. Jimmy, it's your pick. Uh, can I start with a consonant, please? Thank you, Jimmy. L. And a vowel. E. Consonant. R. A vowel. I. Consonant. G. A vowel. A. 
A consonant. M. Uh, another consonant. D. And a final vowel, please. And to finish, I. And your 30 seconds starts now. Tony. Uh, just six. And Jimmy? Yeah, I'll stick with six. OK, Jimmy, what's yours? Milder. Milder. And Tony? Glared. And glared. Yeah, both good sixes. Were you tempted by a seven there, Jimmy? Uh, grailed. Grailed. Mm. Mm. Don't think so. Um, I was looking at Miraged, actually, to see if that was them. That's not. No, not grailed either. Uh, so sixes are bound, but anything more than that? Gamier. Mm. Mm. That's of a bird smelling gamey when it's hung. Um, and Mirage, yeah, just sixes. Just sixes, mm. OK. Um, on to our next letters round. Tony, this time it's your pick. Uh, start with a consonant, please, Rachel. Thank you, Tony. T. And another. N. And a third, please. G. And a fourth. S. And a vowel, please. E. And another vowel. A. And a third vowel. I. Uh, one more vowel, please. Another I. And a final consonant. And a final M. And here's the countdown clock. Jimmy, how many? Um, eight. OK, and Tony? Just seven. What's the seven, Tony? Seating. Seating, yeah. And the eight, Jimmy? Imagines. Imagines. That's very nice, yeah. yeah good. Good. Yeah, very good eight. Anything to match that? Steaming. Steaming, yes. Very good. And did we think there's a word giantism? Yeah, giantism um, is a tendency towards an abnormally large side, same as gigantism. In the case of me, I would know nothing about whatsoever. I knew you'd yeah. say that. <laughs> <laughs> OK. Uh, steaming, though, very good for eight as well. Uh, but uh, the points go to Jimmy in that round. He's on 47. Tony is on 18. On to our next letters collection, and Jimmy, it's down to you. OK. Um, can I start with a consonant, please? Thank you, Jimmy. We'll start with W. And a vowel. E. A consonant. P. And a vowel. O. Consonant. D. A vowel. U. A consonant. M. Um, a vowel. E. And a final consonant, please. And a final C. And time starts now. Hey, uh, Tony, how many? Just five. Just five. And Jimmy? Uh, six. OK, what's the five, Tony? Cowed. And the six, Jimmy? Uh, cooed. Or cooed? He's yeah. spelling it... C-O-U-P-E-D. P-E-D, yes. Mm. Um, cooed's actually cooped. Not, right. not what you think, not something to do with military coups, but it's a heraldry term, term from heraldry, and it means to cut off, uh, I guess, something on a flag in a straight line. So if, if a design is cooped, it's cut off. Very good. Yeah. Did you know that, Jimmy? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> Neither did I. <laughs> what have you got over there? That's we had that, yes. Well, that's the best we could manage, that in was fact. Our lot. Yeah. Very good. 
OK, you two can just take a short breather whilst we cross over to the dictionary corner again. Susie's looking at the origins of some words. What today, Susie? Yes, two terms about little things. Doll and pupil, and they're both diminutive terms, quite old, actually. Um, doll, very quickly. Um, you know how we have a tendency to shorten Christian names? So um, Derek becomes Del, Ter Terry becomes Tell. Um, and Doll comes from Dorothy. It was a shortened form, a nickname for Dorothy. And um, Dolly, for a long time, in the 17th, 18th century, was a man's girlfriend. My Dolly was my girlfriend. Um, and then just slowly over time, a human figure, often a pretty little girl, um, became a doll. So it goes all the way back to Dorothy. But pupil's quite interesting because the pupil that you have in school and the pupils of your eyes are actually related. You wouldn't think they were. Um, it goes back to um, Latin pupus and pupa. Uh, and they meant uh, a boy and a girl. Um, and over time, pupilla, the little girl, again, meant the doll. But what's that got to do with the eye? This is what I thought was interesting. If you look at yourself in the mirror, look very closely at the pupil of your eye and you'll see a little reflection of yourself. And that little reflection looks like a little doll. And that's why uh, the uh, pupil of your eye goes all the way back to that, that reference to the doll in early times. Mm. Uh, Jimmy, 53. Tony, 18. It's time for our next numbers round. And this time, Tony, it's your selection. Uh, may I have an inverted T, one large and five small down the middle? Thank an you. An inverted T straight down the middle. Thank you, Tony. So this T has two, four, one, nine, four, and 50. And the target, 593. And you have 30 seconds to reach that target. Jimmy? Yeah, 593. Tony? I think I've got 592, but I haven't written it down. So. Okay, well, let's hear the 593 from Jimmy. Okay, uh, 4 minus 1 is 3. 4 minus 1 is 3. Uh, times by the 4 gives times you 12. Times by 4 is 12. And times by the 50 is 600. Is 600. Um, then the 9 minus the 2 gives you the 7. 9 minus 2 is 7. And, and two. take it away for 593. Very good indeed. Here's your next teaser. The words this time are non-media, non-media. And the clue, to get this, you have to get with it. To get this, you have to get with it. I Believe Gel for Joint and Muscular Pain. Sponsors Countdown. What else have you lied about? Did you do it? Did you kill her? This is mine. This is written in. For the rest of our lives. <laughs> he murdered Sean Kennedy. And then he framed my son. I've been accused by villains and thieves. He's capable of anything. I can assure you of that. You're not going to do it. This is mad. After tonight, it's all going to be over. Where is he, Steve? I want to know where he is now. <laughs> Have you missed me? Hollyoaks. Monday at 6.30 on 4. When I first read the script for Night at the Museum, I immediately wanted to do it. I think people connect with that idea, the fantasy of things coming to life. That's cool. Yeah, it's freaking awesome. The older audience enjoys the comedy that comes from the human beings. I cannot tolerate this type of thing. And the, the kids love uh, Rexy or, you know, the creatures. Lawrence! getting slapped by the real monkey. And the trainer is standing there with a piece of food going, hit him harder, hit him harder. Fire up the iron horse, boys. Prepare the catapults. The idea of it just, it seemed really cool to me. And I thought if I'm a 10 year old kid, I would love to see this movie. And then I thought if I'm a 40 year old guy, I'd like to see this movie. <laughs> Down. This is not worth 11.50 an hour. Night at the Museum, plus an intro from Ben Stiller, Sunday at 6.15 on 4. I Believe Gel for Joint and Muscular Pain. Sponsors Countdown.
Uh, yes, uh, to get this, you have to get with it. The answer is mundane, and I have to be honest, I've never heard of it. Susie? Yes, it means worldly, so uh, relating to the world. So if you're mundane, you're fashionable and with it. Ah. Yes. No wonder I've not heard of it. <laughs> okay. uh, Jimmy's with it. He's got 63 at the moment. Tony has 18. Let's move on with our next round. It's another letters round. Jimmy, it's your pick. Um, can I start with a consonant again, please? Thank you, Jimmy. We start with D. And a vowel. A. A consonant. T. A vowel. E. A consonant. R. A vowel. O. Consonant. N. A vowel. A. And a final consonant, please. And finally, S. And here's the countdown clock. Tony, how many? Seven. And Jimmy? Seven as well. What's yours, Jimmy? Donates. And yours, Tony? Roasted. Donates and roasted. Yes. yes. Anything uh, of that sort of ilk over there? We can't be, I can't be to seven, can we? We've got treason. Yeah. So just sevens. OK. Yes. Uh, Jimmy, on to 70. Uh, Tony, on to 25. Here's our next letters round. Tony, it's your pick this time. May I start with a consonant, please? Thank right. you, Tony. T. And another. P. And a third one. S. And a fourth, please. M. And a vowel, please. O. And another. A. And a third vowel. Another A. And a consonant. S. And a final vowel, please. And a final U. And your 30 seconds starts now. Jimmy, how many this time? Uh, try seven. Yeah, and Tony? Just six. What's the six, Tony? Stumps. Stumps. And the seven, Jimmy? Outpass. How are you spelling that? O-U-T-P-A-S-S. Oh, outpass. outpass. Uh, outpass. No, it's not. No. It's not, I'm afraid. What have you got over there in Dictionary Corner? <laughs> Satsuma, seven. Very good. Yes. Which is brilliant. It, as you said before, it comes from it's Japan. Yeah, it's a Japanese word. Yes, yeah. so it comes from a province in Japan. Mm. OK, excellent. Uh, as it is, uh, Jimmy has 70 and Tony has 31. On to our next uh, letters round. It's our final letters round of this contest. And Jimmy, it's your choice. Um, can I have a consonant, please? Thank you, Jimmy. N. And a vowel. E. A consonant. G. A vowel. I. Consonant. R. And a vowel. E. A consonant. Z. A vowel. O. And a final vowel, please. And a final E. And your time starts now. Tony, how many of that time? Seven. And Jimmy? Uh, eight. OK, Tony, what's your seven? Zeroing. Yes. Zeroing. Yes. Yeah. Zeroing. Yeah. And uh, the eight, Jimmy? Energise. Yes. Energize. No other. Yeah. Uh, 
Uh, what have you got over there, Rory? We can't Susie? top energise. That's a great one. Yes, mm -hmm. OK, well done. Uh, Jimmy's moved on to 78. Tony is on 31. On to our next numbers round, our final numbers round, in fact. And, Tony, it's your selection. Um, nothing to lose. I'll have six small numbers, please. Six small numbers. Oh, let's see what we've got. Thanks very much, Tony. Um, so, there's one, ten, another one, oh, two, nine, and eight. And the target, 815. Best of luck. 30 seconds to reach it. Jimmy? 817. And Tony? 813. OK, uh, let's hear the 813 first of all then, please, Tony. Uh, 8 plus 1 is eight 9. 8 plus 1 is 9. Times the other 9... Times 9 is... is 81. 81. Times 10. Times 10 is 810. Plus the 1 plus the 2. And the 1 and the 2. 813. Yeah, that's 2 away. And uh, Jimmy, 817? OK, I did 9 times the 10. 9 times 10 is 90. Um, and then minus the two. Minus the two is 88. Uh, no, I've done it wrong then, I think. Yeah. Not to worry. OK. Uh, so, we've got 813 so far. Can we get 815 at all? Um, no, I did exactly the same as Tony and got 813. Um, couldn't manage 815. Really difficult one. OK, very difficult indeed. Well done, Tony. Uh, so, Jimmy has 78 points. He is on the brink of becoming an Octa champ. Tony has 38. Fingers on the buzzers, please, as we reveal today's Countdown Conundrum. <laughs> Jimmy? Uh, I'll be... Uh, no. OK, rest of the time goes to Tony. He didn't need much for Tony. I think Jimmy was trying to say arbitrary. No, I'm afraid it is neither. Um, barbarity? Barbarity, let's see. <laughs> well, it was academic in the end because Jimmy has won. He is an Octa champ. 78 points right. to Tony's 38. Very well done <laughs> indeed. And Jimmy, of course, what that means is you're going to have to come back and see us again because yeah. you'll be back here in mid-June for our finals and you will be the number three seed. Enjoyed it? Yes. Goes without it's saying, great. doesn't it? Yeah. Tony, I mean, we've barely had time to say hello, hello, hello before it's time to say goodbye. <laughs> um, Ex-policeman, um, policing's changed a bit, hasn't it, now? Are you happy that you're a retired policeman? Oh, yes. I don't think I'd want to do the job now. I think it's far more difficult now than when I joined. Mm. Where, where, where were you stationed in, at? In London. In I was oh, in, in London. the Metropolitan. For my sins, I spent a good many years in traffic. Mm. And traffic did, did you related. pull Rory over at all? Uh, no, no, I don't know that anybody ever did, but if they did, they didn't tell me about ah. it. I was going to say, it's a coincidence that... Um, you're an ex-policeman, uh, I'm an ex-criminal, so... <laughs> <laughs> well, look, commiserations, Tony. I hope you've enjoyed it today. Rory, enjoyed your company once again. Great Rory time. and Paddy's Great British Adventure, I have to ask you, you took part, I think, in all sorts of things, didn't you? Cheese rolling, shin kicking, swamp soccer, mm. worm charming. Worm Will any charming. of them catch on? Uh, no, but I tell you what, it's a life show. The worst thing was the, um, the caravan destruction derby <laughs> in which you drive around a stock car track in Lincoln with a caravan on your back and the idea is to smash up the person, smash up all the caravans, you know, of all the cars driving around. It's the most terrifying thing ever. It's a bit like the M25, isn't it? That's all. <laughs> OK, we'll see you again tomorrow, Rory. Uh, likewise, Susie and Rachel, they have to go off now because, of course, it's time for prayers and Bible reading. Me, <laughs> I'm off to work on the body. See you at 3.25 tomorrow. Bye-bye. <laughs>
Well, next time for a change from the advertised programme, a full lap of the planet in the Vendée Globe Sailing Challenge. Countdown is sponsored by I Believe Gel. Pain relief you can count on. My name's Johnny. Not that disabled bloke who hasn't walked for 20 years. When the stroke sent me, it unleashed creative bubbles. My brain doesn't work the way it worked before. I was trying to let people see what was going on inside of me. No, I don't think of a world where I can't draw. If that then becomes the only thing you can do, you take that away, then what have you got left? I can't stop it. I can't not do it. Two films about the extraordinary power of art. True stories. Headcase. Painting the mind. Followed by Here's Johnny. Tuesday from 10 on More 4. In the summer of 1940, Winston Churchill faced a terrible decision. France had fallen to the Nazis, and Hitler was poised to take control of the French fleet. Churchill's playing for the highest possible stakes. If it goes wrong, Churchill's finished, Britain's finished, war's over. The invasion of Britain and defeat looked imminent, so Churchill gave the extraordinary order to sink the French fleet. We couldn't imagine opening fire on our friends and allies. It was a betrayal. It's a real crime. It's murder. The forgotten story of Churchill's darkest decision. Bank Holiday Monday at 9.20 on 4. The possibilities of modern surgery are mind-blowing. In four extraordinary programmes, some of Britain's top surgeons will take you step-by-step step through life-changing operations. This is an opportunity to see what actually happens in a real operating theatre. As they perform surgery live on Channel 4. Almost like doing a ballet, you know, in one move to the next, it has to be slick so that the operation runs smoothly. And answer your questions directly from the operating theatre. You spend your life making difficult decisions, but you just need to take that in your stride. Scrub up and sit down for the operation. Surgery Live starts Bank Holiday Monday at 10.25 on 4. Now for, in place of the publicised programme, Around the World Sailing. <laughs> 